Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's SANS 2020 Live Online Lunch and Learn. What's next in vulnerability management? Sponsored by Qualys. My name is Carol Auth of SANS, and I'll be moderating today's webcast. Today's featured speaker is Pratik Brajanka. If during the webcast you have any questions for our presenter, please enter them into the Q&A window located on the control panel at any time. Please note that this webcast is being recorded and a copy of the slides and recording of this webcast will be made available for viewing and can be found on the SANS webcast archive. Now I would like to turn the webcast over to Pratik. Thank you very much, Carol. Hi everyone, this is Pratik Bhajanka. I'm the VP Product Management for Vulnerability Management Detection and Response product of Qualys, and I'm based in India. And that's the reason this is very ironical for me because the title or you know the, the format that we have for this webinar is that virtual lunch and learn, uh, you know, virtual lunch and learn. And this is like I'm based in India and this is way past my dinner time also. So I would call it virtual post dinner and learn for me. But anyway, jokes apart on that, uh, you may be wondering why did we choose the title of what is next in vulnerability management? Isn't vulnerability management something that we have been doing for a long time? You know, some of you may be doing it for 10 years, 15 years. Some of you may have just started right now. But isn't it something that we have already excelled at? So, yes, you're right. You know, some of these questions that are coming onto your head right now, you are, you are right on those parts. So that you, I mean, when, when I say right, you, I mean, when you say that you are doing it for a long time, yes, you have been doing it for a different objective altogether. So you have been doing vulnerability management mostly for compliance objectives. But very, very rare, I mean, it's a very rare case that organizations have been doing vulnerability management for elevating the security posture of their organizations, where they are using vulnerability management for, for making the foundation strong of their security programs and security initiatives. It is, these are very rare cases. And that's the reason the topic of what is next in vulnerability management and how the vulnerability management industry is getting transformed to make it all the way more usable and to make the security posture of an organization all the way more, uh, all the way more robust in the coming years ahead or in the coming days ahead. Uh, those who have attended my presentation in the past, so I know I, I was a Gartner analyst before I joined Qualys and I did a lot of presentations on stage, on uh, webinars and so many other formats. So, you know, I always like to start my presentations with a story and, you know, I will just continue my legacy and uh, go ahead with this particular story. So don't worry, we are still talking about vulnerability management and none of the, you know, we are not talking about anything else. We are very much on the topic. So uh, a few months, I mean, uh, lately or maybe uh, from last few months, I was feeling a little unhealthy and unfit. And that's when I thought I'll go and see a doctor. So. I went to see the doctor and the doctor ran some tests on me and the result came out that, you know, uh, uh, the doctor told me that Pratik, you're running some high cholesterol and uh, it may lead to some serious problems at a later stage. So I'm going to prescribe you some medicine. I'm going to prescribe you some pills and I would suggest that you at least do five hours of physical exercise on a weekly basis. So I took the advice, I went back home, and you know, the, the kind of couch potato that I, ha uh, that I am, and also uh, you know, because of the work schedule, it's very difficult to do exercise. So I did not do much of the exercise, but I took the pills and the medi medicines diligently. And after 15 days, I went to my doctor for the follow-up checkup, and the doctor ran some tests one, once again, and told me, Prateek, I do not see any improvement whatsoever in your cholesterol level. And then the doctor asked me, have you been taking the medicines on time? I said, yes, you know, in a very proud tone. And then the doctor asked me, how many hours of exercise or physical exercise or jogging or running were you doing on a weekly basis? I said, mm, maybe just uh, 30 minutes, uh, you know, uh, all together. And the doctor said, yes, that's the problem. The pills alone will not help. The pills are only the supplements which will trigger, uh, which will trigger only when you are keeping yourself fit and when you are doing physical exercise. So unless and until you do the basic things well, unless and you, you keep yourself fit by doing some physical exercise, the pills will not matter. The pills will not be able to have the impact that you're looking for. 
and it is so true even in security so if you only go by the pills if you only think that bolting on solution one after another implementing a solution one after another when it comes to your security program if it is going to raise the security posture of an org of your organization that means you are just waiting for a doomsday to happen and the doomsday will happen very soon because of the i mean if you do not have the security foundation uh, in place or if you do not have a strong foundation laid uh, if you do not have a strong foundation in place to bolt these uh, other security technologies and other advanced security technologies on a strong foundation those those security technologies will not give you any result and when i say the the advanced security technologies i'm talking about uh the technologies like endpoint detection and response i'm talking about antivirus i'm talking about um, security operation center i'm talking about endpoint detection and response so all these capabilities will only work if you have a strong foundation of vulnerability management and now that we are talking about vulnerability management so because of because of the various misconceptions that we see in the industry this is why vulnerability management is not often perceived as something that will change or that will improve the security posture of the organization and that is the reason now that with this forum i wanted to address those misconceptions first and then talk about the vulnerability management and where is the vulnerability management uh, uh, domain heading or which direction it is heading towards so one of the things that we have been seeing in the market is that most of the not most of the organizations but some of the organizations say that i perform patch management very diligently i do have a patch management practice going on i don't think so i need vulnerability management because i have been patching all those systems in the very beginning uh, and i feel that is doing the task of vulnerability management already it is very wrong it is not analogous to patch management because patch management is an it operations uh, it operations activity and vulnerability management helps you identify the vulnerabilities even non patch related vulnerabilities you can identify using vulnerability assessment and perform vulnerability management around it some of the organizations also think that vulnerability assessment means vulnerability management that means they see they feel that if i am doing a vulnerability assessment scan uh, once in a month once in six months because pci dss says so i am doing vulnerability management but vulnerability management is a much bigger process than just vulnerability assessment and vulnerability assessment is just one part of vulnerability management vulnerability management has vulnerability assessment prioritization remediation acceptance and so many other activities are involved in vulnerability management some of the organizations also feel that if i am getting the penetration testing performed for my organization that means i am also doing vulnerability management and i do not need to do vulnerability management or vulnerability assessment as a separate exercise uh it is also a very big misconception for the reason that penetration testing you know if you look at the penetration testing report penetration testing reports only includes the vulnerabilities which a penetration tester has exploited for 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 an objective in mind Uh, and for the reporting purposes and it only contains the vulnerability which was exploited it does not contain a comprehensive list of all the vulnerabilities which are identified in your environment and that's the reason why penetration testing should not be considered as equivalent to vulnerability management and if you ask me the way penetration testing testing should be conducted it should be vulnerability management should be the first step and then you should be going ahead and perf- you you should be going and going ahead and performing penetration testing vulnerability management should be performed first and then penetration testing and a lot of the organizations also think that you know if i conduct or if i perform vulnerability assessment once in a blue moon once in 6 months as pci dss says once in 6 months uh, you know the compliance requirements and once in 6 months that is not more than enough for the reason that the attackers do not work according to time zones the way we do it is always 10 o'clock at someone's at 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 some place so you need to have continuous visibility rather than just having a point in time visibility or just a snapshot snapshot visibility of your vulnerabilities or or of your of your network environment so once in a blue moon blue moon vulnerability assessment is also uh, not enough and because of these misconceptions these challenges have 
come up in the market is that overwhelming number of vulnerabilities. You know, if you run a vulnerability assessment tool, as many of you have done or may be doing already, you may be seeing that you have a lot vulnerabilities or you know thousands and thousands of vulnerabilities coming up in your report which makes it all the way more difficult for you to consume and go about uh, go about go about acting on it and uh, when you talk about and you may be thinking that okay i am i am doing i am prioritizing the vulnerabilities on the basis of cvss but even cvss common vulnerability scoring system is not the right uh, measure or not the right parameter to do the vulnerability assessment. And I'll give you a very uh, quick example here. If you look at the number of vulnerabilities uh, uh, which get discovered in a year or which get identified in a year, uh, they, so in 2018, uh, around 16,000 vulnerabilities got discovered in a year, but out of those 16,000 vulnerabilities, only 1,000 vulnerabilities went on to be exploited in the wild. That means if you go on about fixing all 16,000 vulnerabilities, you may just overwhelm yourself and overwhelm the entire program and process, and it will lead us to nowhere. And that's the reason we need to have some prioritization in place, which is much more effective than the CVSS and default rating that we have been using, this, uh, we have been using so far. Then when it comes to multiple tools and teams, so if you look at vulnerability management, you perform vulnerability assessment scans, then you do about the prioritization, and then you go about the uh, patch deployment or fixing a particular vulnerability. So if you see, all these capabilities are spread across different tools. You use a vulnerability assessment tool to perform vulnerability scanning, then uh, for prioritization, you are using threat intelligence, and then for remediation, you are using a patch management solution. So all these are spread across different tools, and if you send the data from one tool to another using spreadsheets or using some flat file report, it will just, you know, some of the information just may just fall between the cracks, and it will become all the way more difficult for the consumption of the report and and uh, you know it will lead to so many inefficiency, inefficiencies in the program. Then if I talk about another challenge, which is a very profound challenge that I've been seeing in the market, is that we do have the vulnerabilities coming up, and we do have the default recommendations for each and every vulnerability in the report. But if you look at the recommendation, you would see the recommendations which are given along with the vulnerabilities are not very precise, and they are not very uh, customized according to your environment those recommendations are very much a static list of recommendation for a particular vulnerability and because of this static list which is not very customized according to your environment you may end up wasting your time on things which will not have any result and because of that you will lose a lot of time and that's the reason a specific uh, solution or recommendation according to your particular environment is very very important when it comes to vulnerability management and as I, as I was talking about the CVSS, how CVSS is not, a, not an effective measure of prioritizing the vulnerabilities. So this is something which is on CVSS website itself, National Vulnerability Database. So they also say it very clearly that CVSS only measures severity and it does not measure risk. And what do I mean by severity? Severity is only associated with the nature of the vulnerability and it is not associated with the fact whether this particular vulnerability is getting exploited in the wild at this point of time or not, whether this particular vulnerability has exploits available in the wild which can, which can use or threats available in the wild which can exploit this particular vulnerability or not. So it, it takes into account, the severity or CVSS takes into account that all the conditions which are favorable to exploit this particular vulnerability are already met and that is how when this vulnerability gets exploited what would be the consequences of it but it does not talk about whether it is practically possible to exploit this vulnerability or not and that is the reason the cvss score that you see by default in your vulnerability assessment reports may not i shouldn't be using the word may not is not the right measure of prioritizing the vulnerability and you should be prioritizing the vulnerabilities on the basis of the risk the risk that particular vulnerability carries and we would be talking about the risk a lot more in the coming slides and as i was mentioning if you remember the example that i had used where 
you know, over 16,000 vulnerabilities got discovered in 2018 and 2019. And out of those 16,000 vulnerabilities, a very small fraction of vulnerabilities, which is around 8 to 10 percent of them, or 12 percent in certain cases, in, uh, in certain years, uh, go on to become exploited or go on to get exploited in the wild. So out of 16,000, only 1,200 vulnerabilities were exploited uh, in the last year or in, in 2019. So if you only go by the numbers game, you would want to go about fixing all 16,000 vulnerabilities, which is practically very difficult, practically impossible and practically difficult at the same time. And that is the reason we should be redefining the way we look at vulnerabilities. So typically or the traditionally what we have been seeing and what we have been saying is that a vulnerability is something which is associated with a software uh, associated with a softer weakness which can be exploited. But now if you just go about the softer weaknesses which are found in software, that means there will be 16,000 number of vulnerabilities that you have to take care of. And that may not be able to give you uh, the right, uh, they, that may not be able to give you the right result also at the same time. That's the reason you should be focusing on the vulnerabilities which, which the probability of which the, the probability of which, uh, which getting exploited is highest in the wild and the vulnerabilities which are getting exploited at this point of time. That's the reason a vulnerability is only as bad as the threat exploiting it and the impact it will leave on the organization. So this is how you should be defining the vulnerabilities and you should be focusing on those 1,000 or 1,200 vulnerabilities which are getting exploited and which will have a material impact on the security posture of your organization. And now if I talk about security, we have been talking about security all this while and, uh, and we know that vulnerability management is something which will help us in creating a strong foundation for other security technologies to work upon. But again, you know, if you look at it, would you want the security to be proactive or would you want it to be just reactive? And the reason why I brought this topic up is because uh, if you see in the recent times, uh, or maybe let's, let's take a step back. So before 2012 or 2013, organizations across the globe were only focusing on prevention technologies. You know, they wanted to prevent 100%, 100% of the attacks that they may be subjected to, and they were investing heavily on just the prevention technologies. Then the shift came in the industry where organizations realized and they acknowledged the fact that 100% prevention is not possible. That means I need to have some detection and response capabilities for the, for the uh, attacks that may have bypassed the prevention and protection capabilities. And that's when they started uh, investing a lot, more, a lot more money and or you know, deploying detection and response tools. But gradually, the organizations started adopting the notion that I do not need security operations and prevention and protection capabilities. I can directly buy detection and response capabilities and detect an attack and respond to that attack and that will help me in, uh, in raising the security posture or that will, that will help me in establishing security in my organization. That is not 100% true and that is not completely false also at the same time because detection and response is not a very proactive way of security. It is a very reactive security. And why do I say reactive? Because detection and response, you know, if you go by the word detection, detection is something which, uh, detection capability is something which will only kick in when something has already bypassed some of the controls and the attack is right now live an attacker is very much active on your system or in your network, and that's when on the basis of what the attacker is doing in the network, what the attacker is doing on the system, you would be able to detect that, yes, something is going on in my system, something is going on in my organization, and I should go ahead and detect it or you know, raise an alert for that, and so that the analyst, the SOC analyst, or the threat analyst should be able to respond to it or should be able to investigate it first and then respond to it by stopping or by killing uh, the process change or by, you know, by isolating the endpoint on so many different measures and then take certain response to fix that particular problem. But if you look at it, we are 
we have started overly relying on the right hand side and overly relying on the detection and response side that and we are assuming that all the 100% of the attacks that enter the organization would be detected by the detection and response uh, capability that i have which makes it much more reactive when we can when when we can stop the attacks at the very beginning itself or on the very left hand side itself or from entering the system itself or from entering the network itself so by using the basic things you know when it comes to the basics and basics of information security or the protection taking technologies you would be able to stop those attackers or stop those attacks from getting realized in your network and in your system so some of the basics that i'm talking about when it comes to security is vulnerability management patch management security configuration management devsecops threat intelligence and asset inventory so had the vulnerability management already be in, been in place so uh, let me reiterate the example once again so the threat has entered the system the network and the threat is doing certain things on the network and on the basis of the behavioral analytics uh the threat detection and response capabilities it detected the attack and you did the investigation and you realized that this particular threat has entered by exploiting a vulnerability on on the operating system and then you go ahead and after after stopping the attacker after killing those processes or kicking the attacker out then you go ahead and do the patching of that particular vulnerability but what if that vulnerability was already identified as a part of vulnerability management and it was already patched as a part of vulnerability management and that would have prevented this attacker from entering into the organization or the network uh, network of your organization and that's the reason why patch management vulnerability management and the basics are very very important and we should be shifting security to the left hand side or we should be stopping the attacker at the entry level at the very basic levels itself and we should be relying on detection and response only for the spill over from protection capabilities to uh, to, to the to the runtime execution capabilities or detection and response capabilities uh as we are talking about vulnerability management this is again a very very major problem that we see in the industry is that vulnerability management is often considered as a numbers game in the market so there are two situations right now in front of us uh there is in the first situation in my organization i identified 1000 vulnerabilities and uh, the analyst or the security analyst or the vulnerability management analyst then remediated or fixed 900 vulnerabilities in one month without any context so the analyst fixed 90% of the vulnerabilities which were identified in the system bravo it looks like a very good job uh, the person may just be getting a promotion and on the other case 1000 vulnerabilities got identified and this person the second analyst could only fix 100 vulnerabilities in 5 days and by using some context ah just 10% of the vulnerabilities is the person even working or uh, like because of the work from i guess the person may just be sleeping and not working at this point of time but now let's look at it which one is the most or which one is the preferred approach and which one is the effective approach when it comes to vulnerability management so the approach where you are fixing just 100 vulnerabilities out of 1000 and as soon as possible in the shortest span of time possible and with the context by looking at the vulnerabilities in in the in the light of threat asset or sorry threat context threat intelligence and asset context and business context if you are only able to remediate 100 vulnerabilities also with this kind of context and risk based prioritization you are taking a very we are taking a very effective approach towards vulnerability management because these are the 100 vulnerabilities which are getting exploited in the wild first so we should be fixing these vulnerabilities first and also if you look at this we are fixing these vulnerabilities in just 5 days that means we are also reducing the time to exposure or the exposure time of these vulnerabilities because the attackers are always active and they are scanning your system 24 by 7 and also if you look at the statistics the average time uh, before an attacker exploits a vulnerability 
since the vulnerability discovery is getting reduced over a period of time and now the average time has come down to 7.5 days so that means the gap between a vulnerability getting notified or getting acknowledged by the vendors or the uh, security researchers and it starts getting exploited in the wild is just 7.5 days so if you keep this this vulnerability uh, un patched or unfixed for a long period of time you are just inviting trouble for yes, yourself and with the approaches that you see you know if you fix 900 out of 1000 you are just reducing risk on paper you know for the management that see i fix 90% of the vulnerabilities but you may not be reducing the risk in real because those 100 vulnerabilities that you have left because you did not apply any context you just went by the uh, chronological order or you know just started from the top of the list uh, you may not be f identifying and selecting the right vulnerabilities and that's the reason you could be leaving so many big holes in the security posture of your organization which may lead to you know which may lead to breaches or which may lead to any kind of attack whatsoever so that's the reason when it comes to prioritization if you see how did i come to a point that i how did i how, how could i identify that i need to fix these 100 vulnerabilities out of 1000 vulnerabilities so that is where the prioritization comes into the picture so the first level that you see on this diagram is all vulnerabilities all 1000 vulnerabilities then oh, i'm sorry then i applied some context so I applied threat intelligence. So I already have threat intelligence coming in my security operation center, uh, but then I will have to export my data to a threat intelligence uh, vendor's interface if they support it, or I, I will have to send this data to a SIM tool where threat intelligence tool is already integrated to identify the number of vulnerabilities on the basis of threat intelligence. So out of these 1,000 vulnerabilities, the number may just be right now 300 vulnerabilities after threat intelligence. But then I applied another level of prioritization, which would be uh, vulnerabilities after threat intelligence and asset criticality and asset context. So now on the basis of the asset context, out of uh, 300 vulnerabilities, I identified 200 vulnerabilities. But still, these are too many vulnerabilities to take care of. Then I did another level of prioritization where I did, where I have applied threat intelligence, I have applied the asset context or the business context. Then I have also applied the current security controls already in place because as you are running an organization, you may already have so many other security controls already in place which is reducing the attack surface of a particular vulnerability or the attack probability of a particular vulnerability. And that's the reason you should be factoring that into account to filter out the vulnerabilities for, because filter out the vulnerabilities in which because of a mitigation control or because of certain configurations on the system, the probability of an attack is very, very less. And I'll give you an example in the, in the upcoming slides and I will show that, you, show that to you with a example also how it can be realized on a tool how can you filter out the vulnerabilities for which there are secure configurations already enabled and just to reiterate on the same thing so if you have all the vulnerabilities you know all thousands thousand number of vulnerabilities you can apply these vulnerabilities through different filters which will give you a prioritized list of vulnerabilities to work upon so that you can get your arms around a small number of vulnerabilities uh, so that the IT operations team can work on it easily without uh, making much fuss about it because IT operations team have to take care of other, uh, other agendas also and not just security. So it will become easier for them also. And at the same time, you would be able to elevate the security posture of your organization by focusing on the right things. And this is, this is the kind of example I would like to quote here. So if I start my day, so let's say that I start my day at 9, uh, 9 uh, a.m. in the morning, and I have, uh, I have uh, let's say, 50 number of emails waiting for me to, uh, 50 number of uh, emails uh, that, that are pending on my, uh, sorry, pending on my mailbox, but rather than going about those emails, I first start on doing some internal security trainings. And if I go about doing see, uh, some internal, not security trainings, but any training for that matter, then 
by the end of the day, I may not have much time to go around all those 50 or 100 emails that are waiting for me to respond. So I need to prioritize according to what, what is the objective and what are the activities which will have higher impact on, uh, on the security posture of the organization. And that's the reason I should be going about those 100 vulnerabilities first and then going about the rest of the 900 vulnerabilities so that I can first prioritize resources on the things that actually matter. And as I was talking about the vulnerability management, whether it is a numbers game or what, so, so these are the two different mindsets when it comes to vulnerability management. So if, it is, if, if you apply the numbers game mindset, you would say that once in a month scan is good enough. So if I am doing a scan once in a month or once in 15 days or once in six months, that would be good enough. But the game theory mindset would say that it's always 10 a.m. somewhere, you know, uh, somewhere in some place. That means a vulnerability or, or an attacker does not go by the monthly cycle when they are scanning your system. So they are looking at your systems 24 by 7. That means I also need continuous visibility into vulnerability assessment or when, you are, when, when it comes to identifying vulnerabilities. It cannot just be uh, once in a monthly scan. Then the numbers game approach would say, if I prioritize vulnerabilities on the basis of severity or if I fix 900 out of 1,000 vulnerabilities, that means I am good. But the game theory mindset would say, Attackers don't care for the severity of the vulnerability, rather they care for the exploitation, the ease of exploitation, the return of investment that they would receive when it comes to exploiting a particular vulnerability, and they do not care much about severity. The numbers game mindset would say that I have to impress my boss, so let's fix 900 out of 1,000 vulnerabilities, and uh, that will fix 90% of the vulnerabilities that are arising, and that will make it much more easier. But the attacker-driven approach would not just look at the numbers saying that, okay, I have to impress my boss. The attacker mindset would say that even if I fix these 10% of the vulnerabilities which are getting exploited in the wild, I will be able to do the job effectively. Then if you look at you know, the traditional mindset or the numbers mindset is that if I go about identifying vulnerabilities in IT assets and mostly in server environment, I am doing my job well, but the attacker mindset would say that security is only as good as the weakest link in my organization. That means if I am only taking care of the IT assets in data center environment and I am not taking care of the endpoint segment, it will leave a big hole in my security posture which can lead to, or which can lead to an attacker getting into my system, getting into my network. Extrinsic motivation, we look for extrinsic motivation that yes, I'll be applauded uh, by my manager saying that, okay, I fixed 900 vulnerabilities, but the game theory takes into account that yes, I fixed the vulnerabilities that mattered the most, and it also takes into account that what is the return of investment on the decision that I have been making. And that's the reason I say that vulnerability management is not a numbers game, but it is a game theory where you take into account how or uh, where you where you're trying to understand the attacker's mindset that they are not looking into the vulnerabilities uh, just in numbers and they are looking at my system when it comes to identifying vulnerabilities in real time in continuous manner and that is the that is the same kind of uh, you know the same kind of process and the same kind of mindset i should be applying when it comes to vulnerability management and now if i say that vulnerability management is not a numbers game then what are the things that I should be focusing on when it comes to vulnerability management? Then I would say you should be, suggest you should be focusing on TTR. And what is TTR? TTR is time to remediate. So how fast you are able to remediate these vulnerabilities to minimize the exposure window as much as possible so that you go about elevating the security posture of your organization. Then you should be focusing on TTD another jargon, another fancy term. So what exactly is TTD? So TTD is time to detect. So time to detect in the sense, the, how soon you are able to detect vulnerabilities in your organization. So if you are able to detect a vulnerability as soon as it comes out in the environment, then you would be able to remediate it as soon as possible. And that's the reason you should be focusing on time to detect and time to remediate so that 
the time which an organization takes to fix that vulnerability is reduced to minimum possible. And the time organization is left exposed to risk should be as small as possible or the exposure window should be as small as possible. And as we are talking about vulnerability management cycle all this while, so vulnerability management cycle starts from IT operations, that is asset inventory, then you go about performing vulnerability management, then you go about performing threat detection and prioritization or prioritizing the vulnerabilities on the basis of the risk, and then you go about patch management or patch deployment to fix these vulnerabilities and to fix, to fix these prioritized list of vulnerabilities. But then what is the problem? Does it not look very simple? The problem is that these people process, processes and tools are broken. So asset inventory is done in asset inventory tools like CMDB, then vulnerability management is done in a product like Qualys, then prioritized threads is done in your SIM tool where you have the vulnerability assessment feed coming in and threat intelligence feed coming in, and then you are prioritizing the vulnerabilities on the basis of threat and vulnerability, and then you go about remediating the patches or remediating the vulnerabilities or deploying the patch. And that's the reason the the information falls between the cracks and the complexity arises. And that's the reason the, in, the integrated approach of vulnerability management where vulnerability management when, when done in an integrated manner with integrated discovery and integrated response makes much more sense. And that's the reason Qualys introduced a new concept called vulnerability management detection and response where the entire life cycle is has now come on one single tool in one single workflow so that it becomes easier for you to fix a particular vulnerability, easier, easier for you to uh, reduce the time to detect and time to remediate a vulnerability. So these are some of the things associated with uh, the concept of vulnerability management detection and response. So you are able to detect new assets which are getting connected on your network. As I mentioned earlier, that security is only as strong as the weakest link in your organization. So if you do not, if you did not know about, about an asset which is connected to your enterprise network, how would you go about scanning that particular asset for vulnerability assessment? So that's the reason why integrated asset discovery is a very important component of VMDR, vulnerability management detection and response. And once you have detected this vulnerability, oh sorry, once you have detected this asset, you should be able to build the inventory of this particular asset about what kind of operating system it has, what kind of different software and different versions that, that this particular asset uh, has so that you are able to build a comprehensive asset inventory. And then on the basis of this, you go about performing vulnerability assessment and you identify the vulnerabilities which are residing in these assets, these IT systems, hybrid IT systems, and you also identify the configuration level weaknesses by running the configuration of these systems uh, against the CIS benchmarks. And when I talk about identifying vulnerabilities, identifying vulnerabilities and uh, configurations or the security misconfigurations, they should be done in real-time manner. And the concept of VMDR talks about it in continuous and real-time manner itself. And once you have identified the vulnerabilities, you do prioritize it on the basis of real-time threat intelligence, uh, the vulnerabilities which are getting exploited in the wild, and not just the vulnerabilities for which there is an active exploit or attack available in the wild, but talking about the vulnerabilities which are actually getting exploited in the wild at this point of time. And then using the contextual awareness, because every environment is unique, every organization is unique, so you should be able to apply the contextual awareness or your unique environment to go ahead and identify the vulnerabilities that matter to your organization. So if you remember the prioritization levels, so not just the second level, but you should be looking into your business context and then further the security controls in place as well. And after identifying these vulnerabilities, you should be able to go ahead and fix these vulnerabilities by identifying the specific recommendations tailored to your particular environment and organization so that you can go ahead and fix 
or go ahead and apply the exact recommendation and remedial measure which will fix this particular vulnerability. So this is why remediation is now becoming a part of vulnerability management and that's the reason it is called VMDR and this is what is next in vulnerability management where right from asset discovery to asset inventory to vulnerability management to threat detection and prioritization and remediation all are coming on the same platform in an integrated workflow to reduce the time to detect and to reduce the time to remediation. And in the interest of time, I'll quickly skip this. You will have the slide deck for your reference anyway, and you will have my email address after the end of the slide deck, uh, which you would be able to, I, I mean, if you have any questions on these two particular slides, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to answer. And now I'll quickly show you the demo of the VMDR concept that I've been talking about all this while. So this is how, okay, just let me just log in, it got timed out. And please keep the questions coming in through the Q&A uh, box that you see there. And we will start taking those questions and answers in about five minutes from now. Right, so when it, when it comes to VMDR now, so what I'm doing is I'm selecting the asset tags that I would want to put into the mix to identify the vulnerabilities uh, in, so let's say, so when I am talking about vulnerability management, when I am trying to fix certain vulnerabilities as a part of vulnerability management, I will have a certain objective in my mind before I go about prioritizing the vulnerabilities. And that's the reason I would first select certain number of assets that I am right now interested in for a particular objective. So let's say that my objective right now is PCI. So I will be selecting all the assets which are uh, related to PCI. So I selected PCI DMZ, the assets which are related to PCI are in DMZ, then the PCI where agents are installed and the PCI systems are, which are Windows system. And it told me or it gives me the number of assets across these asset tags, which is 83, and total number of vulnerabilities found in these 83 assets, and this is the breakup according to the CVSS rating. And then it will also tell me the vulnerabilities on the basis of the detection age. So when was this particular vulnerability detected in my environment for the very first time? And this is the real-time threat intelligence that I am bringing onto the console to identify the vulnerabilities which are getting exploited in the wild at this point of time. And this is the asset context that I would be able to put in to refine the vulnerabilities further to get to the crux of the vulnerabilities or to identify those 100 vulnerabilities which matter the most to my organization. So, you know, after all these contexts, I click on prioritize now. Now it will be able to identify that out of um, out of the 83 vulnerabilities, 32 number of assets have the vulnerabilities which are getting exploited in the wild on the basis of the context that I had applied above. So let me just scroll that up for you. So on the basis of malware and vulnerable, on the basis of these RTIs, 32 number of assets are getting exploited or 32 assets contain the vulnerabilities which are getting exploited. And total number of 65 vulnerabilities out of 672 vulnerabilities are the ones which are getting exploited in the wild at this point of time. And out of these 65, 29 are unique vulnerabilities. And these 12 patches that I see here, which is a tailored recommendation according to your environment by taking into account the patch state of the system and by taking into account the supersedence of the patch, it recommends you 12 patches which will fix all these 65 vulnerabilities. And you can create a patch job from the very same console, you can create a new patching job, you can add it to the existing patching job, or you would be able to identify those patches which are missing on these 32 assets, which will fix these 65 number of vulnerabilities. So all this is on one single platform and one single uh, integrated workflow and you, uh, in, uh, below you can also see a detailed list of vulnerabilities uh, individually that you can individually patch also in terms of vulnerabilities uh, patches list now you have patch and uh, vulnerabilities and these uh, the number of assets in which this particular 
patch is missing and then you can also look at the asset view to identify whether this particular asset has how many patches missing. So this is how you would be able to do the patching also from the same console itself. And these filters help you filter down or remove the vulnerabilities for which there are already some security controls in place. So if I talk about a very common example of blue keep vulnerability, which was a vulnerability found on remote desktop services, uh, is that if I already have network level authentication enabled on a system, then the attack surface for remote desktop services or uh, 3389 port would be reduced. And if the asset already has network authentication enabled, I can use this toggle and it will remove the vulnerabilities which had network level authentication enabled on, enabled on those uh, systems. So this was all about the demo. And I would just like to leave this with a thought that uh, this is the service which was done by WHO where uh, mosquitoes, you know, we are very much afraid of sharks all the time, that sharks are very dangerous and uh, they, they can be very, uh, I mean, we, we, we are very scared of the sharks, but we often forget the, forget the fact that we are surrounded by mosquitoes all the time. And the, the mosquitoes kill more people in one day than sharks killed over the last hundred years. So with this an analogy, what I wanted to point out is that we are very much afraid of the zero days and the zero day vulnerabilities and exploit that may be coming out in the market, but we may often miss or uh, we may often overlook the fact that the malwares and the ransomware that we see all around ourselves can be a lot more uh, can be a lot more devastating than the zero day vulnerabilities that are coming up in the market or that are getting discovered. Uh, in the market, so we should not be we should not be overlooking the malwares and the vulnerabilities which are known to us. We should be going about fixing the vulnerabilities uh, which matter the most, which carry the most significant risk to our organization. And these are my contact details. Feel free to reach out to me for any question that you may have on this concept. And if you if you would like to know anything about vulnerability management, I'll be more than happy. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you so much for your great presentation and to Qualys for sponsoring this webcast, which helps bring this content to the SANS community. To our audience, we greatly appreciate you listening in.